What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky P here, back with all the news after week number 10 here in our Columbus Aviators franchise. Next up, the Colts have... Oh, the Colts. The Aviators have a rematch against the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Colts are only 5-4 and four right now. However, when we played them earlier in the year, they were missing a key member at wide receiver. And we are going to have to check how their injury situation looks right now. Let's go ahead and get some more scouting going. And then we're going to be looking at the awards throughout the entire NFL so far. And you know what? We're just going to scout the top of the draft. Some of these guys, like I don't really need a quarterback. I feel very comfortable with what we are getting uh, right now from Russell. But Leonard Culliver looks solid. Granted, I don't think we're going to have a pick anywhere near the top. So that's something that we're going to have to consider. But that's okay. I'm um, just going to continue to look. Jason Stone. Second round talent? Really? Dude, he looks solid to me, man. He looks pretty solid from what I'm seeing. I'm going to watch him anyway. Sometimes if players have a lower talent rating, they, they have a tendency to drop. And I mean, even this guy, like what's going on? These players in other drafts that I've had would definitely be a lot higher up i feel like i'm seeing some pretty solid players out of the draft right here i don't know where these bad ratings are coming from uh talent wise but you know i don't know it is what it is uh so let's go ahead and check out the injury report for the colts again when we played them earlier they were not at full strength it's going to be interesting to see how they're looking now mcknight and hale will return after this week sankey is going to be out for one more week after this week and here we go with the Colts, and Zeeler is out. That's a big loss to their offense, as well as Trey Mason and Roberts. We know how good Roberts is, so they are still just getting bitten by the injury bug. They do have Robert, not Roberts, um, which was their wide receiver. Parker Hester, I believe, was out in that first matchup against them. So he will be back, uh, but very, very interesting. That's three big blows to their team, definitely hurting their running game, missing Mason and Zeeler there. And then Roberts is the captain of their defense. I mean, this guy is a star in the making. And not having him definitely hurts their team. Uh, this week, what we are going to do is look at the yearly awards. We looked at the uh, stats from around the NFL last week. So this week, we're going to focus over here. Teddy Bridgewater, 28 of 42, 386 yards, two passing touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown. Richard uh, Sherman with seven tackles, three interceptions. Uh, Houston with five tackles, an interception, and a touchdown. And then Brown with 12 receptions for 216 yards and three touchdowns. Monster game from him. Here we go, baby. The yearly awards. Let's check it out. And uh, Max Austin, we saw his stats. Clearly the MVP. The only thing I can't figure out is how they are 6-3 and three with how this guy is throwing the ball right now. They must really struggle on the defensive side of the ball because Austin is balling out. Tyson Russell going to be number two. Josh Broussard, three. Jeffrey Ewing in at four. Cam Newton, five. Le'Veon Bell, six. Andrew Luck, seven. Nassib at eight. Garoppolo at nine. And Flacco coming in at number 10. Coach of the year, Tomlin leading the way. The Steelers, nine and oh. They have yet to lose a game. The Aviators, the second best record at eight and one, seven and two for single. A guy that we are familiar with there. Go down the list. Let's go ahead. And we'll check out the NFC first. Max Austin obviously leading the way. Cam Newton, two. Broussard, three. Alfred Morris, four. Ingram, Wilson, Bridgewater, Bryant, Hopkins, and Evans rounding out the crew there. Defensive player of the year, Luke Keekley getting sacks and interceptions. He's doing it all. Kelvin Shepard for the 49ers, despite being a 78 overall, is coming in at number two. Donald Butler coming in at three. Nico Johnson at four. A lot of players with lower ratings here. Very interesting to see that. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Julian Beasley. We saw him, and both of these guys are 6'4 wide receivers, and they are both getting it done for the 7-2 and two Packers. James Talbot, number 3 for the Rams. Trenton Norwood coming in at number 4. Calvin, Flor or Calvin Florence at 5. Demarcus Norwood coming in. So the Norwood brothers, there we go. There we go, coming in at number six. Dion Roberts, seven. Rayvon Sellers at number eight. Julian Lucas, another Packer here, coming in at nine. And Patrick Clark at 10. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Josh Rogers, 84 overall for the Cowboys. Le'Veon Tate, 76 for the Falcons. Marquise Day Gordon, 81 for the Panthers. Demarcus Taylor, 84 for the Vikings. And the Vikings have been drafting pretty well, too. I'm surprised their record has yet to show it because we have seen quite a few players that they have gotten. There's another Packer player. They just had an excellent draft. And um, 
you know, a team to look out for in the future, obviously. Max Austin clearly going to be number one there. Go down the list. Drew Stanton starting for the 49ers right now, but they're 6-3. and three. He's getting it done. And Alfred Morse is a big reason why he has killed it all season long for the 49ers, leading the NFL in rushing touchdowns. Uh, so interesting to see that. And again, we're talking about great draft picks from the Vikings. 91 overall to Sean Young. Uh, they've just done so well. There's Beasley, the rookie, and Means is going to be here as well. So both rookies for the Packers uh, standing out early on in their careers there. So again, very bright future. Defensive line. Now, did I see Aaron Rodgers? I forgot to look for Aaron Rodgers. Was he not there? So Aaron Lynch and Smith both playing uh, defensive line now for the 49ers. Linebacker Keekley obviously leading the way there. And uh, Kelvin Shepard. So no Navarro Bowman. Uh, go down the list here a little bit. All right, kickers, we'll check this out. And I need to go back. Did I just look over him? Best quarterback. Did I look over him? So how in the world do they have two wide receivers there and not Aaron Rodgers at quarterback? And maybe he went down with an injury and his time has been split between somebody else and that would be the reason why? I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out the AFC. Uh, let's see. Offensive player of the year, Tyson Russell. Le'Veon Bell, two. Jeffrey Ewing, three. Nassib for Flacco. There we go. Rodman Scott is on the list. What? I love Rodman Scott, but I certainly do not feel like he would be on this list at this point in his career. Really? We're going to have to go look at his stats because that seems a little wonky to me. Is he really that high up? I, I'm, I will take it. I will not complain, but offensive rookie of the eye. Now this I can get on board. I can get on board with him being Offensive Rookie of the Year. I'm just shocked that... Interesting. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, lateral Jeffrey going to be number two. DJ Cunningham, three. Stacolian Lewis. And a four, Taylor Reed, five. Wes Garrett, six. Francis Hobbs at seven. Brandon Oliver at eight. Darian Adams at nine. And Austin Ryan coming in at number ten. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Le'Veon Conley. For the Broncos, just building on that defense once again. Coming in at one, Leon Carpenter, two. Anton Ford at three. Richard Riley at number four. We know how good he is. Trey Griffin at five. Dustin Gilbert at six. Chris Hood, seven. CJ Cole, eight. Antoine Russ at nine. And uh, Denitri Benson coming in at number 10. Best quarterback, Russell leading the way. We love to see that. Let's go ahead. Running back, Le'Veon Bell. And Rodman Scott what that is so bizarre to me now see austin i feel like has gotten more touchdowns we're gonna have to look at this afterwards i like rodman scott i'm not trying to say i don't i'm just kind of shocked to see him up there curtis Harden going to be a number three on this list i'm glad we got him back up there uh last year was definitely a bit of a down year for him and you can just see our offensive line wrecking people Defensive line, Adamica Sue and J.J. Watt leading the way. Reyes is going to make the list for us there, though. I like to see that. Uh, Clowney down there at number nine. Best linebackers and Derek Morgan going to be here at number seven. And uh, Roberts, who is going to be injured for our game against the Colts, coming in at number eight. Defensive back, White. Man, this guy has been a star since coming into the NFL. Bradley Roby at number two over Tyrone Stevens. I, I love seeing both of these guys here, and clearly it's based only on their interception numbers because what I'm guessing is Roby might have more tackles than Stevens only because Stevens doesn't allow his receiver to get the ball, where Roby greatly struggles with that sometimes. So that would be my explanation. I don't know. I don't know if I'm wrong on that or whatnot. And uh, Mason Johnson's struggling a little bit this year. Last year he was killing it for us. This year not so much. Let's go ahead and check out these stats, though, because... What? I mean, that that to me is not top 10 offensive player of the year for the conference stats. I That's interesting to me. I'm not trying to knock him. I'm just wondering why he's up there. Um, now, he does have two more touchdowns receiving that's just interesting i wonder if they like his kick returns what has he done here um not not as good as boswell punt returns though no uh 31 well he only had one punt return interesting i don't i'm shocked to see that to be honest but i'll take it i'm not complaining 
Uh, but that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button. It really does help me out a lot. Look at our division. If the Texans win this next game, our entire division is 500 or higher. That's pretty nice. Uh, we're the only one really standing out, though. But, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you guys in Week 11 as we take on the Indianapolis Colts. Later. <laughs>